Hey guys, Meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Thursday mountain weather update. My first stop is going to be to the northeast, and this is actually where some of the best skiing is going to be over the next uh, three, four, five days with these clipper systems quickly racing through uh, a lot of the northeast. But this is Killington. You've got snow coming down. I think you could pick up, you know, three, four inches out of this uh, this clipper, and then there's going to be some additional snow down the road. Let me take you to radar up in the uh, the northeast so you can kind of see what this this clipper looks like. So you've got rain over southern parts of New York, and then you have to change over, and then it should be mostly snow in northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine at all of the, the major ski areas. Um, so this thing will race through today, and I'll look at the timeline for additional snow in the northeast coming up here in a second. Here's radar across the west. I mean, what a difference, right? What a contrast. There is nothing going on out west. So you've got a big dip in the jet over the northeast you've got a big ridge of high pressure here across the west i mean it is significantly drier across the pacific northwest and bc than what it has been today's dry tomorrow's dry for a lot of the uh, the pacific northwest the atmospheric river is completely done it uh, i really don't see any signs of it uh, coming back for quite a long time at least in this forecast period um, okay, let me show you water vapor satellite imagery here across the west. A few things to point out. So uh, on this, your oranges and reds are going to be your drier air at the low levels, and then your, your blues and your white colors are going to be your moisture. Um, and that typically is associated with uh, storm systems. But an interesting feature right here, a little bit of a cutoff low. This is what's moving in and will help to break down. Let me just draw it. will help to break down this this ridge of high pressure that is sitting across a lot of the desert southwest. I mean, you can see how dry the air is. We're talking deep reds in some of these areas, very dry. So that cutoff low will help to um, erode that area of high pressure and kind of set the stage because this is a big storm system right here. It will help to set the stage for that area of low pressure to move in and deliver snow to a lot of the west and pull in some colder air. I'll show you what that's going to look like with the jet stream forecast coming up here in just a few. Here are my bullet points uh, for this. And it is definitely drier in, in a lot of the Pacific Northwest. Talked about that. We've got this high pressure ridge. Uh, and then that storm system I drew that's out in the Pacific, that impressive looking one, comes in around 3 2, 3 3, and 3 4. Um, and that one should deliver colder air to a lot of the West. And then there's another storm system behind that for 3-5 and also 3-6. Here's my timeline, best odds of snow. For Big Sky, the Wasatch, uh, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for example, in the Wasatch, your next best shot of snow comes in 3-3, 3-4, and it looks to be moderate and maybe heavy, potentially heavy. Um, Tetons, 3-3 through 3-5, light to moderate. Colorado, you've got a light shot on 3-3, moderate 3-4, and light to moderate on 3-6. Um, the Pacific Northwest, things are pretty quiet until we get, I mean, there's some light shots, but really nothing big until 3-6, 3-7, and 3-8. Tahoe, a couple of medium, uh, moderate shots of uh, snow accumulation. And the Northeast, like I said, you see, you've got your snow today, it's moderate. And then 228, 29, or 228 th and 3-1, light accumulation. And then a heavy shot, 3-5, 3-6. So the pattern keeps delivering these storm systems to the Northeast. Let me show you what it looks like in Colorado on the time height forecast. This is Copper Mountain up there, um, just before you get to Vail Pass right there. Uh, on I-70, and Copper Mountain is a good sort of, it's very centrally located, and it's a good represent, representation of what is going on in Colorado right now, and it's very dry. So on this, you read this from right to left, it's a 72-hour forecast for humidity in the atmosphere, and for the next 70 hours, it is exceptionally dry. That's what the oranges and the, the yellow and the orange colors represent, dry air, sinking air, now, the wall of green you see at the very, on the very end of this, at the, at about 72-hour period, 73-hour period, that's late on the 2nd into the 3rd of March. So that would be that storm system that I'm talking about. Um, and, and eventually that would be moving in on 3-3, 3-4, 3-5 <clears throat> to a lot of Colorado. So it's, it's essentially what I'm saying is it's going to be dry for a while and it's a waiting game. Let me uh, drill down just a little bit here. This is Alta, Utah. There's not a lot to show here. It's effective about 9,000 feet. It's totally dry all the way through uh, early on Sunday, March 2nd. 
but it's going to be mild. The winds are also very light. I mean, this would be a great period, you know, if you wanted to get out in the in the back country and really get some long days in. There's no weather coming and the winds are light. But look how warm it's going to be. 34 for the high today. Um, 36 tomorrow, so a high freezing level. Um, I mean, in Colorado, we're looking at freezing levels in the coming days maxing out at 11, 12, 12 and a half thousand feet. So it's going to be warm no matter where you're at. 36 on Saturday and then a little cooler on Sunday. Okay, let me uh, take you up to the uh, the Tetons. Jenny Lake, Wyoming, effective about 87 to 8,800 feet right here. Um, and it's totally dry for the Tetons. So long stretch. Um, of dry weather and the wind a little gusty this afternoon up to uh, 35 miles per hour. But then look how light the wind is, 28, 1, and 2. It's going to be warm up to about 31 today. Tomorrow, 34 and 36. So really warm on Saturday and pretty warm on Sunday at about 34. So we got some warm days ahead with this big area of high pressure. Okay, let's talk about the jet stream pattern here. And... This is, let me start this animation here at the, at, the, at the very start. So today, this is the jet stream pattern. And what you're looking at here winds at about 30,000 feet up at the jet stream level. These are the guiding winds. The storm track pushes the storm systems around the globe. I want you to notice the cutoff low approaching California. I showed you that. And also the big arcing to the north of the jet stream. All the cold air is bottled up into Canada, and it's very warm across the lower 48. I mean, as I've been showing you from Alta to the Tetons to Colorado with these freezing levels that are exceptionally high. Um, so let's see what uh, the future holds. All right, so let's move from Thursday into Friday. There's Saturday. Now, on Saturday, that uh, cutoff low is moving in. There's not a lot to it. it. Its main purpose is to kind of break down the high pressure ridge. But look to the other uh, Pacific. Here comes a pretty good uh, series of low pressures. So on Sunday, you can see the low approaching the west coast, the dip in the jet. And by Monday, that's a pretty well-defined storm system coming out of California. And the northern branch of the jet has weakened, and that's going to allow it to pull down some colder air. All right, so there's Tuesday. The storm system now moving through the uh, Intermountain West, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico into Wednesday. That might spin up into a Colorado low Tuesday, Wednesday be, and strengthen before it moves out into the plains. Um, and there could be some severe weather on Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night in the plains as a result of this. But you can see the next storm system. Look over the Pacific. That's that uh, that final storm system around 3536, maybe 37, that will be moving in. All right, here's uh, Thursday. And we'll end on Friday. Um, at this point, that storm system is moving into California and will eventually move into the interior. All right, let's talk about snow accumulation over time. So remember on this, your lightest blue colors are going to be under three inches. Greens are three to six, yellows are six plus, reds are 10 plus. So start to set that uh, about 11 o'clock today, there's your snow up in the northeast, potentially some pockets of three, four, five inches up there. Let's move ahead. All right, here we are early on Friday, massive high pressure across the west. Another clipper for the northeast right there late on the 28th. Look at that, another shot of snow. I mean, so these storms just keep coming. That's what the jet's doing to that area. All right, very dry. This is late on Saturday, March the 1st. You can kind of see the evidence of that cutoff low right there over the four corners, southwest Colorado with very light accumulation. All right. <clears throat> this is late on Sunday, March the 2nd. You can see the evidence of our, 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 our next significant storm system moving into California, Nevada, with snow accumulation intensifying. Um, there's early on Monday, March 3rd. And then it makes its move into the, uh, the Wasatch, Idaho, Montana, uh, Wyoming, and then eventually building into Colorado. Here's late on the 3rd. There's early on the 4th. Drags a front through Colorado. There is late on the 4th. Um, and then the storm system moves away. Um, okay, let's talk about, uh, here's the 6th, lunchtime on the 6th. Here's late on the 6th. There's early on the 7th. Here comes that other storm system around 5, 6, 7, 
moving in from California, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, getting a shot of snow. There's late on Friday, March 2nd, March 7th. There's early on the 8th, snowing in Colorado, and then it dissipates. All right, so what am I forecasting here? Here's my official numbers. This is all of today through the 7th. So this goes way out to March 7th. So keep in mind, all these numbers, uh, they don't all happen at once. Um, there's going to be two, like two different storm systems, so that's kind of a rolling accumulation between all of this. But 6 to 12 inches across the Wasatch will do it. Um, I've seen some higher numbers, but 6 to 12 in my forecast, about a foot down in Bryan Head, 8 down in Snowball. In Colorado, um, pretty good, pretty good uniform, 8 to 14, 8 to 15 inches across most uh, resorts. The low spots, you know, around Crested Butte, the wind direction with these storms, just not all that favorable. That could change. Um, eight around Eldora, but any all the other uh, resorts, the major resorts are in the double digits. Northern New Mexico around 10 for Tahoe, Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire. Up in the other Tetons about six. Big Sky, Bridger Bowl about six. Eights up in Northwest Montana. Uh, not a lot for Brundage Sun Valley, but potentially eight up around Schweitzer. Interior BC, pretty good around Red Mountain, and then everybody else is light to moderate. Uh, Pacific Northwest, again, not a lot of snow early in the period. Things will pick up for you later in the period. Uh, maybe some bigger numbers around Timberline and Bachelor. And looking at about 10 to 13 there through uh, Shasta, uh, Tahoe, down to Mammoth. All right, let's look at the northeast. Some pretty good numbers here through the 7th of March. Um, about a foot of snow through Killington, Sugarbush, and you're getting a little bit of that right now. At Mad River, Stowe, Jay Peak, another foot on top of everything else you've already got up at Jay Peak, doing really well this season. Um, 8 to 14 through parts of New Hampshire and Maine. Um, snow Ridge could get a little bit of lake effect and hit 14. Twos, threes, fours down through Massachusetts and southern New York State. All right, we'll end on the big western map here, guys. And not a lot going on early in the period like I showed you. But once we get into March, once we get past 3, 2, 3, 3, all the numbers start to pick up, start to accumulate. And we'll get closer and start to reach these numbers. Thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.